Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Elm Creek here in Farming Simulator 22 with me, Siwati, on what is a start of an October morning. Um, got two fields harvested obviously in the last video. Um, we've now got weeds growing on our, our field, which had the soybeans on. Uh, I've already re-ploughed and re-limed and stone collected this field here. Um, which had the corn on it, and I've fixed the field corner, and I've made it a field again. So, that is uh, okay. So, those are fixed. Um, I've got my wheat field at the top ready to harvest. Unfortunately, the canola is lagging behind a little bit, and is uh, kind of letting me down at this point in time. So... What I'm going to do today is do the wheat harvest, get the wheat and the straw from that field. I'm also going to mow the grass because the grass is ready to mow again. And uh, we're going to set about doing some mulching, I do believe, on the wheat field here. Now, I don't believe I have a mulcher in my equipment. I do not. So, I'm going to need to buy myself a mulcher. Or a couple of mulchers. Right. I'm going to go for this one first. Gonna have, I think, that one. That's seven grand. So we'll have that. And then we'll get one of these bad boys. Well. It's 43 grand. Jeez, that's cost me a lot of money. Um. So, I'm going to want my 7R, aren't I? There is currently parked at the shop where I was selling my fruit and vegetables fairly recently. I sell a lot more now to make my money back. Right, let's go pick up the mulcher first of all. And then we're going to set to work with the mulching. I'm probably going to hire a course play worker to do that. And I will spend a little bit more to that time in today's episode explaining some of course play. Because um, I had some comments on a recent video from Granville Wright asking if I would maybe show a little bit more depth of what I'm doing and explain a little bit more of what I'm doing when I'm in the course play menu setting up course play because it's definitely not as intuitive as it has been in previous farm sim games the new version of course play is probably a little bit overwhelming to look at currently oh I've brought the fucking front weight with me okay um Right, there's a workaround for this. There is a workaround for this. Um, I have to take this on the back at the minute. Should have checked. I forgot. I wanted the I wanted the the, the thingy out the front. Is that not going to hook up to that? It will. Although it's not the same mulcher that comes in the pack with this uh, Seppi 9. Um, they have released a front mulcher on its own as a separate, completely separate mod. And what I want to test is whether the separate front mulcher mod works better than the one in the Seppi 9 pack. Because in the multi multiplayer 
it's so weird saying that because it's pla p l a rather than plow p l o u g h um the multi pack the front mulcher is a little bit hit or miss whether it works or not i personally have had no issues with it but i know in multiplayer mr helgi had lots of issues where it wouldn't mulch a strip in front of the tractor <laughs> and it would leave bits all over the field um so hence why i've gone for the the different mulcher this time around i don't know if course play is going to work with it because <laughs> it's a mod um, whether course play is going to be able to handle the field work side of the job I'm just going to disconnect that. Keep leaving my front weight somewhere. You have to take all the front weights off the tractors today. Well, certainly the uh, 7R here and the... Is that the way I want to go? No. Chains go to the front. So uh, I need to connect on this side. If I'm doing a push, push pull config, I need to be on that side of the machine. Right. So we need to mulch, obviously, our, our soybean field here that we've um, prepared earlier by harvesting. So I'm going to give course play a chance to do it. So first things first, to use course play you need to go into your worker menu okay and uh you need to firstly hit the create job button so create job and then what we've got making sure that obviously i've got no courses loaded is we do course play field work rather than normal field work which is a normal giant ai helper course play field work now you go to target position because basically you need at this point to tell course play what field we are working on so i am obviously picking this field here okay so i've set my my target destination as the field that i want course play to generate the course on i then now press the button to open close the course generator this brings up the course generator now uh the working width is going to be wrong because uh, it's detecting the front unit not the rear one so normally you put the, the width of your implement in there now normally most people will notice i generally set a slightly different um working width i don't normally use the 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 tools width i specify my own and i normally always make it a little bit smaller than the um base uh, normal working width because i like to have an overlap so yes so again just pick that so it's nine meters so i'm going to set this to be 8.5 see if it were it might not work because it's gonna detect the front unit so field center up down so if you're just going to go up and down the field is what you would have set for field center you can have spiral which means the the the, the course play worker will go up one edge of the field and do a do a, a work a row he'll then drive along the top of the field and come down the opposite edge and basically he will go around the field in a spiral using my patented spiral technique and working his way into the middle and he'll finish in the middle of the field you can also do racetrack which is a bit more abstract where basically course play does its own sort of crazy route on the field that it thinks is the efficient way of doing the field very rarely would you use racetrack unless you've you got a field with lots of obstacles on it and lots of islands, weird things, <laughs> you know. 
generally you never use um that lands is a new one as well which is again is supposed to help with fields with islands in um and obstacles i personally never really use those two i normally use spiral or up and down now headland corners your choice of corners here smooth is where it course play tries to follow the edge of the field now obviously most of the fields in the game are square but if you do have a, a a more natural and realistic shaped field you might want to go smooth to stand a better chance of course play following the edges of the field you've also got sharp which is perhaps the most preferred option if you are doing square fields and you've got 90 degree corners and stuff because then course play will actually stop and actually do a proper turn he'll back up and get all the bits you've then got round which is where basically course play uses the radius of your work your tool you're working with and he does a turn based on the radius so if you've got like an eight meter um eight meter tool on the back of your machi machine or front of your machine he will do a four meter curve a four meter turn if you select round i'm going to leave it on sharp because this field's got corners number of headlands pretty self-explanatory that's how many times course plate is going to go round the outside edge of the field before he does his up and down rows i'm going to set it to two um because i've experienced as you've seen in previously in the series with the grass field that if i have more headlands it tends to get a bit messy headland overlap is you know how much you're going to overlap as a percentage of your working width again higher is always better than lower you don't want to miss bits if you don't want to miss bits have a higher um, overlap rows to skip again now depending on your tool and your vehicle and you know how maneuverable it is you may sometimes find that some equipment works better if you tell it to skip rows because it gives it more room to turn around um, before starting the next lane um, some vehicles with a very small and very poor turning circle or vehicles that when they turn they kind of get hung up and caught up on the equipment you definitely probably want to have skip rows turned on um, again when you've got row when you've got land selected or lands um, this is how many rows are in each land so you can choose how many rows are in each block again it's not something i've played with yet i don't really know what that means because again i don't normally use lands as a as a field center option up and down row direction that's automatic longest edge manual i just leave it on auto up and down row angle you can set the up row angle so you can go 0, 5, 10. you can specify what angle you want in there so obviously zero degrees is north so zero degrees would be drive north south you can put the angle you know if you did 90 that would be east west um it's entirely up to you start working on so you've got center or headland i pretty much leave it on center island bypass mode uh, course play does this weird thing as well when you start changing some options it goes a little bit wonky and then you've got your field margin this is a new option this allows you to basically extend the course play course generator beyond the edges of your field a little bit so if you wanted to make it so your vehicle didn't drive off the field at any point you would put positive values in here and that effectively tells course play that your field is smaller than it actually is you want to make course play drive a little bit beyond the edges of your field and basically make course play believe the field is bigger than it actually is again helping to make sure that course play does the whole job that it's supposed to do set it to a minus value i'm using minus two as that's the absolute maximum value um, and i'm pretty much sure course play ain't gonna be able to hit anything <laughs> especially as i've got two headlands as well so he shouldn't drive off the course but then it's a case of generate your field work course so you hit the button for that and course play will do its mathematics 
and it's generated a course. And so now I can close the course generator. And now I've got um, obviously my course generated. And you can see course based on his rows up and down. Got his headlands. And there's his stop point over there. Blue arrow indicates his starting point. Red arrow indicates his ending point. Now, obviously, if you want to make course plate a little bit more, you know, efficient, you can now change the target point and put it somewhere near the start point. I could probably do that a lot better. So, yeah, I'm going to put him there. So, course play will now drive to there first. And then he'll he'll look for the start point and he'll start at the first waypoint and he'll do his up and down rows up and down up and down up and down and then he'll do his headlands and that's pretty much it don't need to do anything else i can hit x now to start the job if i want to check change any course play settings i can do although there's not really any needs um to change anything turning on field i've deactivated because i like course play to be able to turn around and drive a bit um tool raising he raises tools late he lowers tools early again for me those settings are my personal preference because that way course play is less likely to miss bits um and what have you um And there's really not a lot else I've I've changed in there. Uh, working field work, field speed, and course play menus a little bit dodgy at the minute. <laughs> As it bounces around a bit, uh, I'm not going to set the field work any higher than 18. So if we go back here now. Um, Yeah, I need to set that again. Uh, also, if you interrupt course play, if for whatever reason you stop course play, like if you're doing a seeding course, right, for example, or a fertilizing course, and your machine's run out of fertilizer, you've had to go and refill it. A lot of people don't quite understand how to restart course play in that situation. What you would do is you would actually choose nearest waypoint, you would choose target position and you would manually set the target position on the lane close to where the vehicle stopped and then just choose continue from there. OK. If you're doing collecting wrapping bales, you don't need to worry about target. You just choose your target position. You could pick a target position anywhere on the field. Click start because the tractor is going to scan for your bales anyway and they will drive to the bales. So we're only going to worry about first waypoint. So there we go. Start job. And fold up. Hopefully he'll drive off. Now hopefully, <laughs> as I say, I've not used this combination of tools with course play. It could go all horribly wrong. But hopefully he will use the front and rear. Mulchers to mulch this field. I'm hoping. <laughs> Got the front one on. Got the rear one on. Got the rear one lowered. Ladies and gentlemen, course play is a goddamn genius. Course play, such a great time saving mod. And he's off and he's working and he's doing his, uh, he's mulching for me. That's fantastic. Right. I now need my 6R. 
because I'm obviously also today need to cut grass. Uh, what have I, I've got the fast bale, haven't I? Um, I think I'm going to do silage bales this time. I've already got a course loaded in course plan currently. So what I need to do. We have the current course on this machine. He, he had a course loaded up. Right. Now we've got mowers. How wide is my mower before I go any further? 12.3. Okay. Um, so the grass field needs to be mowed. Let's set up a course for mowing. So we're going to create job. Again, we're going to do course play field work target position. There and maybe like that. Open and close course, so working with, we know that needs to come down, and I'm going to set it to 11. Field centre up and down, headland corners smooth, number of headlands, I'm only going to do two this time. I'm going to do slightly more overlap, because he did miss bits last time. Up and down row direction, automatic, up and down row angle. Uh, I'm going to set that to be east to west, actually, 90 degrees. Start work on centre, and again, I've made the field a little bit bigger. So I generate the course. Horse place tried his best <laughs> to do what I said, and quite got it right. Start job. So he will go off and he will now do all the grass mowing for me. Very simple, very straightforward when you kind of understand how the menu works. Obviously it's not as it's not it's not quite as useful as the old HUD, the old little mini HUD that you used to click up and get working. But we kind of have to work with what we've got now. I could have set that to swath dropping, I've just realised. Hmm. Could have made um, doing um, bailing a lot easier. Right. Might need him to go and get my trailer. Tell you what we're going to need as well, ladies and gentlemen. Go get some fuel. You're about to run out, so you need to go get some fuel, Mr. Uh, Horse play man. Right. To the harvesting then. 24 minutes into the video now, we're going to get on with the harvesting. <laughs> Unfortunately, the canola is still not ready. But my straw is. My wheat is, ladies and gents. Bit of frame lag there. Bit laggy. Now let's see. 
are we going to do straw dropping or is it just going to do blowing because i want a straw drop because i would like to pick up the straw We might as well get every little bit we can to help us make some money. So straw, again, has its has its uses. Wow, framey lag again. I think on my PC is um. Currently demanding a lot, and it's not the game. <laughs> it's not the game, folks. Must have something running in the background that I uh, haven't closed before starting the game. Might be me uh, cloud software, me backup software running in the background because I deleted a load of files today. So now it's having to resync and re backup everything because I cleared out some of my, my um, hard drive. I've also just downloaded a load of new episodes of my favourite TV shows and stuff. So of course it will now be trying to, um, it's currently trying to download those in the background and then once it's finished downloading them, my cloud software will then start trying to upload them to my online, uh, online account. I should have shut all that down before I started recording. But anyway, we're getting out of it. And we're getting mulching done, and we're getting mowing done. So right now, life on the farm is pretty, pretty sweet. Pause is because I, I've hit the print screen button. I'm surprised my own... Weirdly, my um, stream deck wasn't doing that when I was pressing the button. You noticing a bit of lag today with the game. And there goes the train. Five percent full. Whoa! I tell you what, this framey lagginess is really starting to bother me now. That is bad. Is that some kind of? What is that in the log? Looks like, um, uh, da, da, da. have I got any, I shouldn't have any debugging stuff on, turned on, should I?
Vehicle debug is deactivated. Deactivate it. Hmm. I've just updated Courseplay today to the new version, and I wonder if maybe the new version of Courseplay is giving me a bit of um, giving me a bit of that lag. It's not auto drive, is it? I've not got debugging or something enabled in auto drive that I shouldn't have. Nothing is turned on. So that should be all fine then. Maybe it is. Maybe it is something on my PC that I should have closed before I started playing the game that's stealing resources away from me while I'm trying to play. Might be, um, oh, it's probably bloody OneDrive. Thinking about it. Uh, OneDrive is, um, because I deleted all my, um, farm sim. Save game backup folders. Because they were taking up loads of space on my hard drive. All the different save game backup folders for my let's plays and stuff and um, they weren't syncing properly with my dead my own personal cloud system they were, they were giving me errors so um, I've deleted them but now OneDrive's probably like oh you've deleted too many files Normally I pause OneDrive syncing because obviously Farm Sim is constantly modifying files as you're playing. The last thing you want is those constantly being uploaded and in the background by OneDrive. It's the one if I like if I have to have one complaint about Farm Sim, <laughs> another one people say is that I hate the fact that Farm Sim puts all the user data and save data in your bloody my documents folder i would prefer it to have be able to be able, i would prefer it if i could specify somewhere else on my pc to store my arm sim save data you know so it's not on my C windows drive and it's therefore not being affected by my other windows applications doing whatever they do you know, I would put it on the same drive as I've got the game installed on and have the save data and the game on the same drive. Makes more sense to me. I know I could probably move the farm sim save folder using some weird tool or whatever. Um, some fancy Windows command or something. could of course tell Windows not to bother synchronising my farm sim folder with um, OneDrive. That would also work, I guess. Guess what I forgot to do today, folks? Turn the hood off. <laughs> so you guys can't see how many litres of wheat I'm harvesting because of course 
You're still supposed to be guessing. You're still supposed to be guessing. Like I say, I will reveal the uh, soybean and corn update amounts once we've got the wheat and the canola harvested. So... I'm just going to hide the fill levels for the time being, folks. <laughs> so, you, so those of you that haven't yet participated in the the guessing and guessing contests can do so. So, what I'll do is once I've harvested the canola field, the episode after that is when I will reveal exactly how much stuff I've managed to. Um, Get from this 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 current harvest period from these fields. So obviously you'll be able to have a guess on the canola field. I mean, if you want to have a guess at how many liters of canola I'm going to get now off that field, do so. You know, and then um, I can have a look and I can see who's the closest. Who got it closest? By looking back through the comments, and I can see, we'll see who wins. <laughs> see which of you viewers has managed to guess correctly, or well, the you know the nearest <laughs> what I've been able to harvest of each of the different crops. Wow, my sheep's are making lots of wool. Hold well on, sheep's. Sky Sport News. Breaking news for Sport. Just going to course correct a little bit here so I can get that little lumpy bit. Sticky outy bit of the thing. Now, what I'm probably going to do with this wheat, by the way, is I'm probably not going to sell all of it. Oh, no. I'm thinking we've got the uh, lovely uh, Sunday lunches in the pen over there. We might get some uh, further Sunday lunches put on the farm in the form of um, some chickens. i get some chickens. The coop somewhere down the bottom there. We've got plenty of room. Mr. Mulcher, he's done an excellent job of mulching that field, he really has. train
So what I need to do now off of camera in a few minutes, once I finish this episode, is I need to get the grass field wind road. And then I need to get it bale and wrapped. Um, and then we need to get this field baled as well. We then need to obviously get the grass field re-rolled after I've collected the bales off of it. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. One field of wheat harvested. Some straw put down. Get that all picked up later on. Oh, the combine there. We need to unload him. And have a quick check. Field status. So we have corners to looks like to do after he's finished. Uh, Miss bits, but I can sort that out. All in all, though, he's done a fairly decentish job of mulching that field. Right, we'll go tip this in the silo. Boom, boom, boom. There we are. There's my wheat being delivered. Right, so I've got straw to collect, I've got grass to bale and collect, and then we've got a field to roll and a field to mulch. Okie cokey, pipey smokey. I think I'm going to get on with that and do that off of camera. I'll bring you all back for hopefully canola harvest and then we'll do some more selling of our greenhouse produce and stuff because ultimately I'm going to need some money I'm going to need a lot of money um, to buy the chickens and get them installed and set up 
So, I shall have a go at that. So, thank you everybody for watching today's video. Really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you've clicked that like button. I'm noticing a little worrying trend that the people viewing the videos, all the views of people viewing the videos are not clicking the like button. Doesn't cost you anything, it's free to do, just press it. Same with the subscription button, if you're not already subscribed, it doesn't cost you anything, just press it. Same with leaving comments, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to leave a comment under the video. Just do it, type something, hit the enter key, send it to the internet, you know, it all helps with the algorithm. And of course, sharing the video with everyone you know, getting more eyes on these videos helps out with the algorithm. So everybody, I will see you all again in the next episode of Elm Creek. But for now from me, it's goodbye. <laughs>